This topic will show how a binary operation can be represented in a Cayley table. Cayley tables were developed by British mathematician Arthur Cayley. Some information is given on him here. For any finite set, a Cayley table can be used to show the outcomes of binary operations for each element. So for example, uh, if a binary operation is defined on the set of numbers 0, 1, 2 and 3, um, A operation B is defined as A plus B mod 4, then we can fill in the results in a Cayley table. So the elements in the set are put in the first row and the first column. And the elements shown in the first column always represent the first element. So in this case, the numbers down the side represent A, the numbers along the top represent B. So pause the slide and complete the, uh, the, the outcomes for addition mod 4 for each of those four values. So the results are as follows. Remember that addition mod 4, when the answer is 4 or above, needs to be reduced. So for example, 1 plus 3 gives an answer of 0, mod 4. So all of the answers in this case will be between 0 and 3. A binary operation is defined on the set of numbers 1, 2 and 3 as A operation B is 2A minus B reduced mod 4. So pause the slide and construct a Cayley table for this operation. So remembering that um, the numbers down the side represent A and the numbers across the top represent B, the answers would be as follows. We're now going to consider whether the binary operation is commutative. Now we can try some values for A and B and determine that it is not because 2A minus B and 2B minus A do not always give the same answer, mod 4, for various uh, input values. We can also tell from the Cayley table if a binary operation is commutative, then the elements uh, will be, it, it will be symmetrical in the leading diagonal. So reflecting in the leading diagonal will give the same elements. This is because interchanging A and B would have no difference. In this case, we can see that it is not symmetrical in the leading diagonal. So this tells us that the binary operation is not commutative. Pause the slide and answer each of the three questions on the screen. So the Cayley table uh, for multiplication mod 5 is given below. Uh, we can show that multiplication mod 5 is commutative because the Cayley table has a line of symmetry along the leading diagonal. And to identify the identity element, we are looking for an element that leaves all other elements unchanged. So we can see either looking down the column for 1 or looking across the row for 1, we can see that the other element remains unchanged when one is used. So therefore, one is the identity element for this operation. Next, pause the slide and answer the two questions below. So we can see that for multiplication mod five, the identity element is one. That is because one leaves all other elements unchanged under the operation. Zero we can see has no inverse because zero will not multiply by any other element to give an answer of one. One is self inverse because one multiplied by one gives an answer of one. 
The inverse of 2 is 3, because 2 multiplied by 3 is 1, mod 5. And similarly, the inverse of 3 is 2. 4 is also self-inverse, because 4 times 4 is 1, mod 5. We're now going to look at the Cayley table for the operation on the set W, X, Y and Z. Sometimes the binary operation is not explicitly given and the only way we can see the results are from the Cayley table. However, we can still answer questions about the binary operation from the results in the table. For example, we may want to know whether the binary operation is associative. We can do this simply by trying to find some counterexamples. So if we try to find uh, A operation B operation C with the brackets, first of all, around A and B, and then secondly, around B and C, if we can find three values where uh, the answer is not the same, we can claim that it's not associative. Trying a few, for example, um, W operation X operation Y, Looking up the answer to W operation X in the table and then X operation Y in the table, we can see the answer is Z. We could try this the other way, finding X operation Y gives us an answer of Z and then W operation Z gives an answer of Z. So because we've got the same answer here, this is not enough to prove that the operation is associative. Um, if we had found a counterexample, it would have been enough to prove it was not associative. It turns out this binary operation is associative. How would we prove this? Well, the only way to prove this um, for an operation given in a table would be to try every option. This is called proof by exhaustion. If we know that a binary operation is commutative or associative, we can use these facts to help us fill in missing elements in a Cayley table. For example, a partial Cayley table for an operation on the set U, V and W is given here. We are told that the operation is commutative. And from this, we can conclude that the Cayley table will be symmetrical about the leading diagonal. So therefore, the missing elements can simply be filled in from the other side. Here is another partial Cayley table for a binary operation. We are told that the binary operation is both commutative and associative. We can use this to help work out missing elements. So starting with the commutativity property, we can reflect in the leading diagonal to find some of the missing elements. However, we still have two elements that we cannot fill in in this way, so we now need to use the associativity property to find these. So in this case, sometimes trial and error will need to be used. So we're trying to find V operation W or W operation V in order to fill in the blanks. So potentially we could use the fact that from the Cayley table, we can see that U operation U gives W. So instead of W, we could write U operation U. Then using the associativity property, we could move the brackets around the first two elements. Use the table again to find V operation U. And so there is V. And then use the table again to find V operation U. So the answer is V. Now that we have found this, we can fill in the missing element V operation W. And using the commutativity property, and conclude the other one would also be V. We could also calculate this 
again using the associativity property. We're looking for W operation V. We could replace W with U operation U from the table. We can move the brackets using associativity. And this concludes that we have the answer V that we were expecting. Now complete the following questions from the binary operations sheets from exercise two and exercise three.